Did you know that Canada, the second largest country in the world, has a history that stretches back over 15,000 years? Before the towering skyscrapers, bustling cities, and expansive wilderness that we associate with Canada today, there were the first settlers, the indigenous peoples. They made the perilous journey across the Bering Strait from Asia, and established vibrant, diverse cultures across the region. From the Haida of the West Coast, known for their totem poles and longhouses, to the Cree in the Central Plains with their semi-nomadic lifestyle, the rich tapestry of indigenous cultures shaped the land we now call Canada. However, the arrival of new faces on the horizon would soon change the course of history. Around the year 1000 AD, the land was visited by seafaring adventurers from the icy Nordic lands. The Vikings, led by Leif Erikson, made their way across the Atlantic and established a settlement in what is now Newfoundland. Their stay was brief, but their presence marked the beginning of European interest in the region. The real game-changer came almost 500 years later. In 1497, an Italian explorer named John Cabot, sailing under the English flag, made a monumental discovery. He landed on the eastern shores of North America in present-day Newfoundland, his reports of the newfound land teeming with fish ignited a spark in Europe. Nations began to jostle for a piece of this vast resource-rich land. Little did they know, their arrival would usher in an era of change, conflict and ultimately, the birth of a nation. The indigenous peoples with their deep-rooted connection to the land, and the Europeans, driven by a thirst for exploration and expansion, were on a collision course. The stage was set for a clash of cultures, forever changing the course of Canada's history. The 16th century brought the French and British to Canadian shores, sparking a fierce competition for control. As the old world set its sights on the new, Canada became a battleground of empires. In 1608, the French established their first colony in Quebec, under the leadership of Samuel de Champlain. A fortified trading post, Quebec became the heart of New France a vast territory spanning a major part of North America. The French mainly focused on fur trade with the native peoples and converting them to Christianity, leaving a lasting impact on the region's culture and lifestyle. Meanwhile, the British were not far behind. They established their colonies along the Atlantic coast, setting the stage for a great rivalry. The British and French colonists clashed frequently over territory and trade routes, leading to numerous conflicts. The most notable of these was the Seven Years' War, a global conflict that saw the British and French fight fiercely for control over North America. The war raged on until 1763, when the Treaty of Paris was signed. In this treaty, France ceded most of its North American territories to Britain, marking a significant shift in the balance of power. The result? Britain became the dominant colonial power in North America, and French influence began to wane. But here's the thing. While the British had won the war, the cultural impact of the French was far from over. The French language, customs and traditions continued to thrive in Quebec and other parts of Canada. Even today the French influence is evident in Canadian society, especially in Quebec, where French is the primary language. So, the 16th and 17th centuries saw Canada caught in the middle of a tug-of-war between two European powers. While the British might have emerged victorious, the French left an indelible mark on Canada, shaping its cultural landscape. The British had won, but the cultural impact of the French was far from over. The stage was set for the next chapter in Canada's history, as the nation moved towards unity and independence. In the face of American expansion, Canada took a significant step towards unity in 1867. This significant step was the Confederation of Canada, a bold move that brought together Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia under one dominion. This wasn't merely an administrative change, it was a defining moment that marked the birth of a nation, a nation that would rise to become one of the world's most prosperous and influential countries. The Confederation didn't happen in a vacuum, of course. It was the product of years of negotiation, political maneuvering, and yes, even a bit of arm twisting. But the end result was a federation that balanced the needs of its diverse provinces while ensuring a united front against external threats. At the heart of this transformation was the British North America Act. This act, passed in the British Parliament, established Canada as a federal dominion of the British Empire. It set up a parliamentary system of government much like Britain's, and divided powers between the federal government and the provinces. It was a unique solution to the challenges of governing a vast, diverse territory. 
But the British North America Act did more than just establish a system of government. It also set the stage for Canada's evolution as a nation. It laid the groundwork for the expansion westward, the inclusion of other provinces and territories, and the development of a uniquely Canadian identity. Yet, the journey was not without its hurdles. There were disputes over boundaries, arguments over language and religion, and struggles over the balance of power between the federal government and the provinces. But through it all, Canada remained committed to the ideal of unity in diversity. The Confederation marked a new chapter in Canada's history, a chapter of growth, expansion and increasing autonomy. It was the beginning of a journey, a journey towards self-governance and sovereignty. It was a step towards the Canada we know today, a vibrant, multicultural and inclusive nation. Canada was now a united entity, but its journey towards complete sovereignty was still underway. The 20th century was a time of global conflict, and Canada was not spared. As the world plunged into the chaos of the First World War, Canada, then a dominion of the British Empire, was drawn into the fray. Over 600,000 Canadians served overseas, many distinguishing themselves on battlefields such as Vimy Ridge, a victory that came to symbolize Canada's coming of age as a nation. Yet the cost was high. Tens of thousands of Canadians lost their lives, and countless others returned home bearing the physical and emotional scars of war. The conflict had a profound impact on Canada, unearthing divisions between English and French Canadians, rural and urban populations, and sparking debates on Canada's role on the world stage. Hardly had the echoes of the Great War faded when the world was engulfed once more in conflict. The Second World War saw Canada play an even more prominent role. The country declared war independently of Britain, a clear step towards autonomy. Over a million Canadians served in this war, contributing significantly to the Allied victory. In between these two global conflicts, Canada grappled with the Great Depression. This economic crisis wreaked havoc on the lives of Canadians, leading to widespread unemployment and poverty. But it also led to the introduction of social welfare programs. The government stepped in to provide relief to those affected, laying the groundwork for the social safety net that Canadians value today. The end of the Second World War marked the beginning of a new era for Canada. The country emerged from the war with newfound confidence and a more defined role in international affairs. It played a key role in the founding of the United Nations and NATO, asserting its position as a middle power on the global stage. The aftermath of these global events would set the stage for a new era in Canadian history. From the mid-20th century to now, Canada has emerged as a global leader in diversity and inclusivity. This chapter of Canadian history unfolds with a significant symbol of national pride, the adoption of the new Canadian flag in 1965. A red maple leaf set against a white square flanked by two red bars, the flag is a symbol of unity, hope and aspiration for Canadians. The 1970s brought about a period of political unrest with the October crisis of 1970. The rise of the Quebec sovereignty movement presented a challenge to national unity as the French-speaking province sought greater autonomy. It was a time of tension but also of reflection, as Canadians grappled with the complexities of their diverse identities. In the midst of this, Canada took a bold step forward in 1971 by adopting a multicultural policy. This move recognized and celebrated the diverse cultures that make up Canada, setting a precedent for other nations to follow. It affirmed that all citizens, regardless of their backgrounds, have an equal place in Canadian society and an equal voice in shaping its future. The signing of the Constitution Act in 1982 was another landmark event. It patriated the Canadian Constitution, giving the country full sovereignty. It also included the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which enshrines the rights and freedoms of all Canadians, further cementing the country's commitment to equality and justice. Canada's role in international peacekeeping has also been noteworthy. The country has consistently contributed to global peace and security, earning respect and admiration on the global stage. Alongside this, Canada's welcoming stance towards refugees has been a beacon of hope for many seeking a safe haven. Today, Canada stands as a testament to its rich and diverse history, forever striving for a more inclusive and equitable society.